Empire's new weapons? How can we compete with something so mobile? There's nothing to fear! They may be mobile, but they're a damn sight easier to handle than that purple devil of Crossbell. What the? Oh! Hello! Incoming at three, Pop! What the hell? Ashen Chevalier, the hero of the Imperial Army. The area beyond here is Imperial territory. You have no business treading into Crossfell. That was a warning. Try to advance any farther, and I will show no mercy. Ugh. All units retreat! We're returning to the outskirts of Altair! I knew you were the one who ended the Civil War, but seeing you up close, you're really something else! Not at all. I'm still fairly inexperienced, if you ask me. Recover the wounded and any POWs and return to Tangram Gate. Just remain vigilant until the speech is over. Yes, sir! It's now March, 1205 of the Septian calendar. Over two months have passed since the Azure Tree vanished. So much happened during those months. President Kreuz was arrested. Crossbell's movement for independence was promptly declared invalid. And before anyone could process what was going on, Speaker McDowell became Mayor McDowell. The war in Erebonia came to an end sooner than anyone had anticipated, but it was quickly followed by the invasion of Crossbell. Gorelia Fortress, which once served as the only physical link between the two nations, was no more. But that proved to be little more than a temporary setback for the Imperial Army, who acted by flying hundreds of tanks over the state from a vast airship. In no time at all, Crossbell was occupied. The Calvert Republic, which had been wrapped up in its own share of chaotic internal disputes, finally reacted to Erebonia's bold invasion in turn. They began with sending its cutting-edge armored airborne divisions into Crossbell, hoping to force the Empire out of the region completely. Every attempt they made resulted in failure, as they were repelled effortlessly by one soldat after another.
And today, at Orcus Tower, the new seat of Crossbell's government, the new rulers of Crossbell rose to deliver a rousing speech. Friends and citizens, it brings me great pleasure to stand here among you once again. But even in the midst of such gladness, the specter of the harm Crossbell has visited upon the Empire lingers still. The destruction of Garelia Fortress and the ensuing civil war it caused has taken a great toll in resources and in lives. The anger, sorrow, and dismay in the hearts of the Erebonian people is still fresh, still too near. But today is a joyous day, a day to put the troubles of the past behind us. Let us join hands and step boldly into the future, leaving our anger and grief behind. Challenges will rise before us, but together we shall meet them. Together we can rise above the tumult of these troubled times. Men and women, old and young, rich and poor, those from every walk of life can share in these aspirations. Looking toward that goal, there is someone I'd like to introduce to you today. A brilliant young man who played a pivotal role in bringing Erebonia's civil war to its swift conclusion. And the individual most responsible for the historic accomplishment that sees me standing before you today. The first Governor General of Crossbell, Lord Rufus Alberea. Greetings, friends. It truly lifts my spirits to be here among you. I'm honored to have been entrusted with the profound responsibility of acting as Crossbell's first Governor General. As I'm sure you're all aware, the division between the nobility and the common people is a long-standing part of Erebonian life. Personally, I stand in support of our class system, but I fully expect that one day it will fade away. After all, if each citizen of the Empire conducts themselves with the courage, dignity, and grace expected of a noble, then what difference would remain between myself and any of you? As I hope for that day, allow me to speak not only as your Governor General, but as an individual when I say, In the name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Eugen III, I hereby proclaim the annexation of Crossbell into the Erebonian Empire. May the goddess above stand witness, and may she forever bless Erebonia and Crossbell with the light of prosperity. We've got some real larger-than-life characters in charge of us now. Sure, the Imperial Chancellor's intimidating, but he's so charismatic that the people eat up his every word. They love the guy. <sighs> I can see why he's the bee's knees over in Heimdall. The new Governor General's something else, too, albeit for different reasons. He's... how to put this? Difficult to hate. Like, he'd tell you to do something, and the next thing you know, you'd find yourself doing it just to see him crack a smile. 
Well, Albere is the name of one of the top noble houses in the Empire. Top two, even. No surprise that the heir of such an affluent family would be popular. But it feels like there's more to him than that. That's what gets me, though. Those two were on completely opposite sides during the war. So why are they both so buddy-buddy now? Very oddly sudden, in my opinion. You're telling me. By the sounds of things, Erebonians can't make heads or tails of what's going on with it either. But you know how it is. There's so many rumors springing up thanks to the war, it's hard to tell truth from fiction. Yeah, I've even heard about a thousand arch tall castle appearing in the capital. I mean, that's gotta be made up, right? There's no way something like that's real. <sighs> You've got a real short memory if you think that's bull. The Azure Tree wasn't that long ago, you know. Point taken. Yes, this is the office of the Crossbell Times. What? Representative McDowell will be issuing a statement. Huh, sounds like something big's happening behind the scenes already. I'll get to gathering some info on what's happening for our international section. Galvert's probably got some good stuff. Works for me. Gotta use those connections of yours for something, after all. <laughs> well, see you later. Our independence came and went like bubbles on the water, and now we aren't even a state anymore. We're in for some tough times ahead. No. They always say that the pen is mightier than the sword. I won't let those guys outdo me. Chief, let me handle that story. That's all we of Heiyue can do for you, I'm afraid. The guards have been given a little incentive to stay out of your way. You should face no more obstacles in your operation. Thanks, Sal. Think nothing of it. It's my pleasure to play all the cards I can. The place you're aiming for is where all the information in Crossbell gathers, as well as its Achilles heel. What you're doing does us no shortage of favors, I'll have you know. <laughs> well, just this once, I'm happy to hear that. Hmm. Do take care, Yin. Uh, my apologies. Rishia. I've received information that quite a skilled warrior is in Crossbell at the moment. As have I. Nonetheless, thank you for your warning. Oh, not at all. I wouldn't want anything happening to a valuable future business partner. I believe that does it for me. I'll be praying for your success. <sighs> he's being awfully cooperative, isn't he? Then again, it's not a stretch to think he's only doing it because he's got something up his sleeve. He's an incredibly shrewd man. Most likely, he's happy to do whatever will shine the most favorable light on him once Crossbell's occupation period is over. True enough. He wouldn't want to screw up his chance to potentially play mediator between Crossbell and the Republic. I get the feeling he'd get along great with Lecter. He's our ally for now, but there's no guarantee how long that'll last. Exactly. It's in our best interest to remain wary of him. Still, if working with him helps protect those I care about most, then I'll gladly do so. Likewise. Tio said to aim for the area up ahead. Crossbell's future rests in our hands, so let's get moving. Right. <laughs> 